Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we'll be showing you how to repair your appliance. Remember, anytime you work on an appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. Also make sure you shut off the main gas valve. In this video we're going to show you how to change out the Whirlpool Dryer Natural Gas Limiter and Natural Gas Orifice. It's going to be a very easy repair and should only take a few minutes to show you how to do it. If you already have these, great. If not, you can click on the link below or get them at AppliancePartsPros.com. When you open up the package, you're going to get the new natural gas limiter and natural gas orifice. The natural gas limiter and natural gas orifice are usually what you take out when you're swapping it over to LP. The main reason to be changing them is if you're changing back to natural gas and you lost them. Converting your dryer from LP back to natural gas is pretty easy. You only have to change out these two parts in the video. The main difference is we're going to show you how to do it on the Duet dryer and your dryer may differ on how you take it apart. In order to get to the part, First thing we have to do is remove the top of the dryer. We're going to use a quarter inch nut driver to take out the screws. Now that we have the screws out, we can take the top of the dryer off. All you have to do is pull back about an inch or so, lift it off the dryer and set it aside. With the top out of the way, we can continue to take the dryer apart. We're going to move these three screws to get access to the computer so we can disconnect the ribbon cables. With the screws out of the way, we can slide the control board panel back a little bit and access the wire harnesses. We're going to disconnect all these wire harnesses in the front so we can kind of get it out of the way and then take the panel off the front. First one we're going to disconnect is this cable right here. There's a little locking tab that holds it in place. So we're going to reach in with a small flathead screwdriver and release it and carefully pull the wire harness off the control board. Next one we're going to do is the door switch wiring harness. We're going to take a small flathead screwdriver and get underneath the locking tab right here and take it in half. Now we can disconnect the ribbon cables. There's a small one and a big one. Same as the other wiring harnesses. They have a little locking tabs that we have to press to release. And then we can carefully pull them off the control board. Now that we have all the wire harnesses disconnected, we're going to swing the control board panel aside and just set it on top of the dryer drum. Now we're at the front of the dryer, we're going to use our quarter inch nut driver to remove the two screws that hold the console in. Once you have the two screws out, we can just lift the assembly out. There's a little tab on each side that you have to watch and make sure it comes up this little opening right here. We're going to have to open up the dryer door and at the bottom of each side of the control panel there's a little locking tab. So we're just going to flex the panel right here and release these two. Once you have them released you can get a, a little bit of a space in there and then keeping this side up we can go to the other side and release it. Once you have both of those released, then we can lift it up so those tabs that we showed you on the back side come out the slots and we can lift the control panel out and set it aside. Now that we have the control panel off, we're going to remove the access panel. In order to get it off, we're going to take off the two quarter inch screws at the bottom of the dryer. Once you have the screws out, you can let the panel drop down and set it aside. Now that we have the excess cover out of the way, we have to remove the bracket that holds the duct onto the blower housing. We're going to use a quarter inch nut driver to take out the screw. Now we can disconnect the wire harness that goes up to the moisture sensor. All you have to do is take a small flathead screwdriver and release the locking tab and pull them apart. Once you have them apart, you can take the extra end and just push it inside the dryer. Now we can remove the main front panel. We're going to use our quarter inch nut driver to remove the two screws that hold the bottom on. Next we're going to remove the two screws that come from the back side and hold the front panel to the cabinet.
Now we can loosen up these top two screws. We're not going to take them all the way out, but we do have to loosen them up so we can lift the front panel off. Now that we have these last screws loosened, we can pull the front panel off. We have a towel down so we can set it on the floor so it doesn't get scratched up. Before we take the drum out, we have to move the computer board housing out of the way. We're just going to carefully lay it off to the side on the frame so it's supported, but it isn't in the way so we can take the drum out. Now that we have the control panel out of the way, we're down here by the front left corner of the dryer. We're going to take the belt off the pulleys. We're going to reach in with our left hand and grab the idler pulley and push it towards the outside of the machine so we can create some slack in the belt and get it off the pulleys. Now that we have the belt taken off from the pulleys, we can use it to lift the drum out and set it aside. Now that we have the drum out of the dryer, we have access to the gas valve. Yours may look a little bit differently, but it's all changed out the same way. We're going to take a 3 inch nut driver and remove the two screws that hold the burner tube on. As you're taking the last one out, you want to hold on to the burner tube so you don't drop it and break the igniter. Once you have both screws out, you can slide it forward a little bit and very carefully lay it down so the igniter doesn't touch anything. With the burner tube out of the way, we can reach in with our 3 8 inch wrench and take out the propane orifice. Once you have it broke free, you can just turn it by hand. Next we have to remove the LP blocking pin. You can just reach in with a short flathead screwdriver and unscrew it. Once you have it loose, you can just use your fingers and take it out. Here's the old LP orifice and limiter next to the new ones. If you already have these, great. If not, you can get it at appliancepartspros.com. Now we can put in the natural gas limiter. All we have to do is set it down on the top of the valve and get it started. Once you have the limiter all the way down, we can reach in with our flathead screwdriver and tighten it down. Once you have that tightened down, we can put in the natural gas orifice. Same as when we took it off, we're just going to screw it in with our fingers and we can use that 3 inch wrench again to tighten it down. With the orifice installed, we can put the burner tube back in place. To put the burner tube back on, we're going to lift it up carefully so we don't damage the igniter and put the hood over the valve right here. Once you have it in place, we're going to line the holes up in the bracket and use our 5 16 nut driver to put the screws back in. Now that we have the gas valve put back together, you can turn on the gas real quick and take some soapy water and test for gas leaks. Now we can put the drum back in. Same as when we took it out, we're going to use the belt to guide it back into the frame and make sure that the rear of the drum sits on the rollers. Then you want to lay the belt down and make sure that the grooves are against the drum and then we can go underneath and route it through the pulleys. Same as when we took it off, we're going to reach in with our left hand and pull the idler pulley towards the outer wall so we can route the belt through the pulleys. Once you have the belt back on, we can grab the front panel and reinstall it. When you put it on, you want to make sure you line the rollers up in the blower housing. You may have to lift the drum up a little bit to get them underneath. Once you have them in place, then we can put the panel in. With the panel back in place, first thing we're going to do is use our quarter inch nut driver to tighten down these two screws. Once you have them tightened down, we can put the ones in from the back side. We have to reconnect the wire harness and put that bracket on. We're going to carefully reconnect the moisture sensor harness. All you have to do is match it up and plug it in, make sure you get a good connection. And then we can use the quarter inch nut driver to put in the bracket that holds the lint screen housing up against the blower housing. And put the screws in that hold the lower part of the front panel on. Now we can put the access panel back on. All you have to do is line it up with the body and push it up into place. Once you have it lined up, we can use our quarter inch nut driver to put the screws in. 
we're going to put the control panel back on. Same as when we took it off. We're going to make sure that these little tabs go into the slots. And then we can just press it down so that the other tabs on the front lock into place. Now that we have it back in place, we can use a quarter inch nut driver to put the screws in. With the control panel back in place, we can lift the control board assembly up and reconnect all the connectors. To connect all the wires to the main board, we're going to bring it closer back to its original position. And the first ones we're going to put on are the ribbon cables. All you have to do is very carefully push those into the slot and lock them in. You want to be careful that they go in all the way, but don't push too hard or damage them. Once you have those connected, we'll reconnect the one at the top. It's this one here with the locking tab. All you have to do is line it up and plug it into place, making sure that it locks in. And then we can grab the wire harness from the door switch and plug it into the harness. It can only go one way, so line it up and plug it in so you get a good connection. Once you have the door switch wire harness connected, we can lift the panel up and twist it around and set it on the front and rear rails so we can put the screws in that hold it in place. We're going to use our quarter inch nut driver to put them back in. Now we can put the top back on the dryer. All you have to do is set it down onto the top and slide it forward. Now that we have the top back in place, we can put the screws back in. We're going to use our quarter inch nut driver to put them in. Now that we have the dryer put back together, we can plug it back in and take it for a spin. Thanks for joining us for another successful repair brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Check out our other repair videos on our site, Facebook, and YouTube.